Have you heard of the elevator game? By adhering to certain rules for ascending and descending floors, you supposedly end up in a different world. Today's story comes from Thomas, from an afternoon during the summer break of 2011, when Thomas and his little sister Lily were playing the elevator game at their grandmother's apartment. They were living on the first floor of the building which had two elevators, but only one was usually in operation except during peak hours in the morning and evening. The rules of their elevator game were starting from the first floor, go up to the second floor, then up to the fourth floor before descending to the second floor, then up to the sixth floor before going back down to the second floor, then up to the tenth floor and finally down to the fifth floor. At this point, a woman in red would appear. She would ask you were going to the tenth floor or the first floor. If you say going to the 10th floor, then you would enter another world. But if you say going to the first floor, it would be giving up the game. Most importantly, you cannot play this game in a group. It must be done alone. The two of them decided to play one by one. Lily went first. Thomas stood on the first floor watching the first elevator floor to ensure Lily followed the game rules. Everything went well at first, but at the end, Thomas saw Lily choose the tenth floor. The elevator slowly started to ascend from the fifth floor. Next, a scream and crying sound came from the elevator shaft. Thomas wanted to run upstairs to save Lily, but just at this moment, other elevator, which had been out of service, suddenly opened. Mr. Who from their community came out from inside leading Lily, who was hanging her head. Thomas was also scolded, being told that they shouldn't play with the elevator like this as it's quite dangerous. After, Mr. Ho left. Thomas asked Lily. Lily, how did you change elevators? Lily replied. Indeed, a woman did get on the elevator at the fifth floor. I followed along and told her, Ma'am, I'm going to the tenth floor. The woman was wearing a red dress, and her hair was done up. Her hand was exceptionally cold when she held mine. The lights in the elevator flickered as she spoke. As soon as the door opened, Mr. Ho stopped me. It seemed as if the woman and Mr. Ho couldn't see each other. Mr. Ho then took me to another elevator. Before leaving, he pointed at the flickering lights and said, Look, you've broken the elevator with your game. Come down with me quickly. And so, I came down with Mr. Ho in the elevator. That night, Thomas woke up from a nightmare. He heard noises in the hallway, like something being dragged along. He brought a small stool and peered through the peephole in the door. He saw Mr. Who with a pale face, looking up at the ceiling, but his hand was dragging a large woven bag with alternating red and blue stripes towards the elevator. Thomas quietly opened the door and followed. When he saw the display panel of the elevator, he noticed the sequence was one, Two, four, two, six, two, ten, five. It paused on the fifth floor for a while before going up to the tenth. Then the other elevator, which had been out of service, made a sound. He rushed back into the room and continued to watch from the peephole. Meanwhile. Mr. Who had somehow found a mop. 
and was cleaning the floor in front of the door. At this moment, Lily suddenly shouted from behind him. Brother, what are you spying on? Outside. Mr. Who paused, then slowly brought his face closer to the peephole. At that time, he fell off the chair in fright and woke up his grandmother. The next day, around noon, the sons and daughters of Mr. Who, as well as his friends, all came over and set off a lot of firecrackers. When Thomas' grandmother returned from shopping, she asked why they were setting off firecrackers. Grandmother said, Mr. Hugh was previously diagnosed with liver cancer. But today, after a recheck, he's all better. He is a healthy man. His children came over and they're setting off firecrackers to celebrate. From then on, Thomas noticed that. Mr. Who would follow him, always leading him to secluded places, such as a new convenience store in the basement, a new toy store in some building, etc. Once, he told him that there was a big swimming pool on the roof of the fourth building and asked him to go swimming. But when they got to the rooftop, Mr. Who's eyes looked sinister, and there was no swimming pool. Luckily, there were two men repairing air conditioners. They stood up and asked, Whose child is up here? It's dangerous on the roof. Mr. Who immediately put on a friendly smile. Naughty boy, let's go down together. Two years ago, Thomas consulted a local exorcist about this matter. At first, the exorcist said that these games weren't too serious but advised against playing them too much as they could have a psychological impact. However, after hearing the entire process, the exorcist frowned. That's not right. The Mr. Hall seems to be from the other world. That night, what he dragged in the woven bag, it should have been a person from this world. He's been replaced. After the exorcist finished speaking, he felt a little scared, but he was no longer a child and had no contact with this Mr. Who. But not many days later, he suddenly realized that since the night Lily played the elevator game, she stopped being picky about her food. She, who used to hate meat, especially loved it after that incident. When adults asked her why she loved meat and stopped being picky, saying how great it was, she just replied. Hey, it tastes much better than the bitter stuff. But what exactly was the bitter stuff? She never explained, just mentioned it was like a type of toothpaste that could fill her stomach. As she was a kid at that time, nobody took her words too seriously. Eventually, Lily deliberately distanced herself from Thomas because Thomas would always ask her strange questions that she couldn't answer. Like, do you remember this from our childhood? Lily couldn't recall. Now, Lily is working and earning her own salary. Every time she visits grandmother, she brings two portions, always including one for Mr. Combs.